VTDA. Hell yeah. VTDA tokens, advanced usage. Let's do some advanced stuff with VTTA tokens. I picked an ogre and I want to make it appear as if the ogre would step outside of the token border frame and approaching menacingly the party. We are doing this by first duplicating the actor, the actual ogre image, because we will need it twice. And I'll explain why in a second. Now the first one will have initially no mask applied, so we will remove that. And we will select the token border and reduce the opacity so we can see the exact portion or the image placement better. Now with both layers unlocked, both of the ogres next to each other, I start by moving and arranging it that it will look good actually. So just by zooming, translating, rotating here is not necessary. But this looks like a great shot. We have an overlap here. This club handle will be behind the token frame in the result. And whole, this whole head and shoulder region will pop out. And then I will even try to make it appear as if he steps outside. So let's try that. In order to do that, we will need two masks. One has applied automatically already. The token frame has a circular mask. This is applied to the main region of the image, which is now visible. And we will need to edit a mask. Just select this part that is actually drawn on top of the token frame in addition. So let's create this mask by clicking on the mask thumbnail of the duplicated cloned layer. Here we will, in the mask editor, just use the mouse to carefully draw without reaching or overreaching the bounds of the ogre image. And we will just draw it carefully to make the colorful part, which will be drawn later on, be the part that we are actually looking for. So this is here extra um, demanding because the outside region of this image is plain white instead of transparent. So when I'm going over the edge of the skin into the white, this will be visible right away. So we will be or try to be really careful to not go over the body regions. It will happen and we don't need to be pixel exact because once we created the token, it will be displayed um, rather small in comparison to the profile image of the actual actor. And small errors are probably not visible in game. But we'll check. So we will probably need some tries to get it really right. I will be as careful as I, as I want to be right now. When I'm demoing the functionality per se, I, I will not be super, super precise. So, but I will show you what it, the end result will look like even with being rather crude now. So this is a little hard to see here because the shadow of the actual foot merges with the actual foot and the image here is perhaps a little bit too, uh, I was say, faded out to actually see. So this is perhaps a good example of how difficult it can be sometimes. This is of course a limitation of the tool, but it's not intended to be a full-blown Photoshop alternative but enable to empower you with some very, very nice effect and create those rather easy. So let's do it like this, perhaps. Um, we've got the shoulder region, we've got the head region, the complete left arm and the foot uh, with this ragged shoe. We will probably need to rework that. I'm now holding shift to remove portions of the region here, but we will just leave it as is. Hit apply and we will see 
the effect right away. Or almost right away. Let's ramp up the opacity of the token frame and put the now masked um, image on top. So we've drawn the mask, but it's not assigned to this image. So let's cycle through it. And now we are applying the mask drawn to the image itself. Instead of this mask is applied to those two layers, this mask is applied to this layer only. And we see that the result is pretty good, actually. It's pretty good. So we got some white issues here on the, on the teeth, the fang region, so we can correct that. Again, I'll use the mouse wheel to um, select a smaller brush size and I'm holding shift and I'm just carefully reducing the bleach on his face. And let's see the result now. That's good. His overbite is shining. That's okay for me. So we got this club is still behind the token frame. The foot is reaching outside, he's looking menacingly to the left, and that's pretty awesome already. So how long did it take me? Perhaps two minutes, with talking and being rather precise. So let's hit save, and let's see how it will look like on a scene. Pretty good actually, um, not too much white cord, a little bit on the shoulder here, and definitely something on the fangs, uh, but otherwise for me, it looks great. So we, we are losing the shadow over here. So this will diminish the actually 3D effect, granted. But it's still, it's rather cool. So that's one technique that you can use to manipulate the outcome of the image by duplicating the layer and displaying only parts of it. Now what else can we do? We can, for example, take this goblin and he has this bony helmet. And we want to recolor this part with a different color because it shouldn't be like he's a big bad evil guy and he has this golden helmet, helmet um, resembling a skull but being of pure gold and perhaps a magic item. So the color doesn't match our story but we can change that rather easily. Again, we will duplicate this goblin so we can actually have the image behind to, to, in order to create the mask more easy. We will not use this image clone afterwards. In contrary, we will hide it. So the ogre before, we actually duplicated to display it twice. This layer, we only duplicate in order to be able to create a mask more easy. Each layer can only attribute or contribute one mask to the whole composition. Therefore, we, we are using already a mask, a circular mask of the token frame on the whole goblin, so we cannot reuse that layer. Therefore, we will need to create a, a clone and create the mask that we intend to use to colorize the skeletal helmet afterwards. So that's good enough for me. We have that and you see that's no different at all. So what do we do? We create a tint layer and we striving for some goldish yellow and we will apply this goldish yellow color with a mask we just drawn we have, we have just drawn so this is the mask of layer 4 we will then click four times over here and then we see this is the mask this looks super awesome already let's check that not too sure because it's just plain white and it looks like a cheap rind of a Mexican wrestler. But we have other tools at our disposal. We can make that layer active by clicking on the number two here, the ID. Then we can change the blend mode to something more suitable. For example, overlay. And if it's too bright, we can always reduce the opacity to adjust a little bit. So because it was a bone helmet, it has a rather bright, bony material, white, beige, beige um, colors. So we go with a white, uh, a yellow layer on top and an overlay, blend mode and a reduced opacity. That's exactly looking like gold, a little bit at least. Or you can change the color if you need more bright tones. Just click on the 
thumbnail of the tint layer and just change the color to something that seems to be more suitable for your taste. Perhaps bluish because it's like a metal, a rare metal one. So that's another easy way to adjust the token by recoloring um, parts or regions of it that you can mask using the mask edit. Let's save that. Have a look at the new goblin. Looks extremely awesome if you ask me. You can even color his teeth goldish because it would fit rather well. The same technique can be used to like recolor hairs, hair colors. You, you found a great image on the internet, but it doesn't match your character description. So you can just blacken the hair or you can create a tint layer and uh, create a, a mask. Again, I'm duplicating this layer to have it more easy. And instead of using the whole complete image, let's delete all that. Again, I'm holding shift and I will just draw with the left mouse button over this area to remove everything. And then let's create some like tribal war marks um, over here, perhaps looking good, really menacing, great paint job, Kurt. Uh, this looks awesome. Little dot on the chin. And now we will apply this mask to the colorized layer, the tint layer. Selecting it. Or there we go. And we will put it on top. Of course, we will need to adjust the blend modes to receive something that's looking actually good. So I'm just clicking on the select drop down here and I'm using the cursor up and down keys to find something that looks not too like put on, but instead more fitting. So let's go for a darker rind here. Something like that. So now we do have some kind of tribal marks um, or some kind of um, perhaps tattoos, facial tattoos, whatever you think is necessary to bring across the vision you have for a character. So rather easy, perhaps not the best paint job, but hey, who am I to judge? And so these are three techniques, well, two techniques like composing images by masking, selecting, cloning uh, certain portions of it and rearranging them to create rather easy, really stunning effects in contrast to just a regular token in a regular frame. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.